Got a few things planned out for today. Nice autumn day, by the way. Look at all the colors in those trees, man. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna be trying out a new sprayer today. I've already calibrated it, used it a few times. Gonna show you guys the sprayer. Gonna give the green a cut again at five mil, a double cut, and then we're also gonna hit a shot into the green. And see how we go. Let's get straight into it. Yo, mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Check out this bad boy that the guys at BA Pumps and Sprays have sent me to use on the green and the surrounds as well. When I want to get a quick application of some liquid fertilizer out or even some weed spraying, this thing is an absolute beast. So as we can see, it's got this huge boom on it, which is awesome. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nozzles. So quite a few features on this thing. Quite a few features. It's got a foam sprayer, so it'll drop out some foam on either the left or the right side to show where you've sprayed. When you're doing huge areas, really, really handy. When we used to do huge areas on the golf course, on fairways and stuff, the foam, foam tanks and the foam foamers would just be super duper handy in situations where you could not see where you'd done your last pass. Not really something I need to do on the green at the moment because I can see once I've sprayed the reflection of the the water off the green, it sort of shines in the sun, sunlight, but when it comes to doing fairways and stuff, this will be cool. This will be really, really cool. Now, a really cool reason why I've been using this on the greens, why well, I wanted this for the green, is because it's so lightweight. So, it has a pressure gauge, as we can see here. So I've, I've um, calibrated in to the pressure. So I use about 30 liters of water over the whole green. That's what I've calibrated it to, and that gets me over it twice on this. Now you can, Turn the pump on. We can choose to either agitate the liquid, which is what you do when you're mixing everything up. It'll just agitate the liquid inside there. And when you're spraying, you just flick it across to spray here. And it will spray out. There's not much water in there, so it's not gonna come out properly. But as you can see, it's also got a little bike speed on here, which will be ideal. So I'm sticking at about five kilometers per hour when I'm using this, just so I'm sticking to my calibration because we have to be so precise. And we're sitting it at about 180, 180 kph, I'm pretty sure, is what I've been running at to get the, the liquid out of the nozzles. And that works really, really well for foliar feeds. Today I'm actually putting out a liquid iron app. So I just want to give this thing a little bit of a color boost, a little bit of a nitrogen push as well, but not too much. There's only 12% nitrogen in this product here and then 10% iron as well. So it's going to give it a really, really good color boost. We're going to put some kelp in there as well, just to help promote our roots on top of that as well. And I'm also going to put some of the Vitalize in there, which is what helped the green repair earlier. Um, I think I've got some here in the back of the gator, actually. We've got our Vitalize just here, which is going to be great while this green is still establishing. And it's got our only 1% nitrogen, 1.4% potassium and 0.1% phosphorus. We're mostly applying it for the microbes that are included in here and all the bacteria. So it's really gonna help strengthen up the plant itself and enhance the root growth on top of adding that kelp in there as well. Really good for getting things to repair, as I've talked about, and that's what really helped us on the green two weeks ago after that roller damage. So that's just agitating at the moment. So I'm thinking about doing a video on how to calibrate sprayers for you guys. I'm actually gonna start a little mini series in the future where I do maybe a two minute, three minute tip video, just to give you guys really, really simple tips, but with lots of information in them, just dedicated to doing tips on how to do things in your lawn, from weed spraying, to why we top dress, why we need to calibrate sprayers, what you need to do when you put in certain products down, heaps and heaps of topics. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you guys would like to see in the future. It'll probably be more towards the start of next season, but starting to get things geared up to start doing that as well. This is an extra video during the week for you guys to see. Nearly a perfect run. I did round up from 26 litres what I was supposed to put out to 30 litres just in case. And we had probably an extra four litres left over. So I'll make sure to go 25, 26 litres next time. But calibration was pretty much dang on. Bang on, sorry. 
just put a bit extra in there just in case, which is not a problem. Just the inside cut or the first cut, or will be first cut once I cut it out, got a little bit extra. All good. Right, so it's the next morning after putting that third out. We have a little bit of a green up, but we'll cut it so you guys can really see the colour difference. And it hasn't even been 24 hours, so I really should have done this two days before to give it the green up. But I've shown you guys this plenty of times in the past. But let's give it a double cut, and then we're going to hit a shot in. Please don't shank it. Please. I think one cut is going to do us today. Not going to worry about doing a double cut. Got a lot off still, like, we are getting a lot of grass off at the moment. That's nearly a catcher. I'm glad it's growing this much still because we're about to hit a cold snap where we get it down to about one degree at night. I think 10's the top. I'm hoping it's not like that for the next couple of months. I don't think it will be, but we are getting a cold snap with a heap of rain that we've got coming in tonight, actually. So this is the last bit of sun that I'll see for a while. But yeah, a block catcher. I'm not gonna do a double cut because I've been mowing it so much over the last couple of days. I was just thinking about that whilst I was mowing the green. Now, we might give the surrounds a mow now before we hit our shot in, just in case hit the surrounds so it's got more of a chance of rolling. I am going to do a second cut, I'll show you. I am going to do like, sorry, first cut on the outside here, so sort of an apron soon. More once the edge is starting filling in a little bit more. Um, all the ryegrass is actually quite thickening up quite a bit, so they're actually starting to get smaller and smaller, which is nice. Do need to get some seed down. I still haven't done it. And the only reason I held off is because of this huge chunk of rain we've got coming in, like it'll be washing. I have no doubt in my mind. Luckily there's enough um, grass there now to really stop anything soil washing, but seed still got a chance of washing. Could have got the tag of fire out. I honestly just forgot about it. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna, we'll do an outside cut or inside cut or an apron. There's so many different names for it. Collar, whatever you want to call it. Very, very soon. Just not today. Had a few guys asking about that. But we're gonna leave the pin in this spot here. So the reason I've got the pin here is because kind of like a hole in one position. So sort of like the 16th at Augusta. If something hits up a little bit higher on the hill, it all feeds to that spot just there and that's sort of how I designed, well it is how I designed this pin placement just here that if you chuck the ball here for example it should feed down towards the hole as you can see now that's going to be behind the hole because I threw it too far too much in that direction sorry but if we have a ball coming down and landing here I'll show you I'll throw a ball up so if the ball comes flying in from the tee which is up the top there which I'll show you guys in a minute I'll get the drain up and everything and take a shot in if the ball comes flying in and lands about here somewhere it should bounce, there we go, and roll down towards the hole. See, that nearly went in. And the reason it feeds that way is because it's actually falling towards that position instead of falling towards the dam. Even this area over here still falls towards the pin. So for like about, there's a good, I'd say nearly a 10 meter strip here that all falls towards that position. So if the pin's there, even if it lands up the top here, it's still going to roll down. Even if it doesn't land on the slope, it's still going to roll down towards that 
especially once the green is faster, it'll get down there even more. But I haven't seen how the green reacts yet to a ball coming in and spinning because we'll be hitting a wedge into the green. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. This is going to be cool. Right, let's get the 2653B out, mow the surrounds, we'll have the ryegrass, which I'm going to do some updates on next week for you guys as well. And then let's hit a shot, bro. Surrounds so are done, looking good, apart from the weeds, which yes, I'm gonna spray them with the follow-up. It's just the rain's coming in tomorrow. Rain keeps throwing me out. Need to look a little bit further ahead in the forecast before I say things on camera. But it's looking schmick, look at that. Look at the color at the moment, man. Those trees are popping, grass is popping. Needs a bit of a furt though, so we might get some liquids on it next week. But the green's popping as well. Look at that color too. It definitely has greened up since we put some liquid on it yesterday. It hasn't even been 24 hours and we've got some colour popping. Mm. Well, let's hit this shot. Let's do it. All right, well, here we are. Got the bag out. You can see the green all the way down there. This is the T where it's gonna be eventually, up the back corner of the paddock. I'm just gonna mow out a little patch here. What a view, eh? How good is that? So range finder, we're gonna hit from about here-ish to the pin, it is 101 meters. Now it's quite a fair drop downhill. I'd say about there's about seven to 10 meters of elevation drop between here and there. So it's gonna be a 54 degree for me. I'm gonna be targeting at about a little bit left on the hill. Now there's wind coming off the northwest. It's about 20 k's an hour, actually quite a breeze coming in. So it's gonna push it to the right anyway. So we'll aim at my spot. Up the top of the green on the left. See what happens now. This could be bad. Let's see how we go. <laughs> All right, let's do it. I'm nervous for some reason. It's not half bad. Did that go long? That was straight at the pin. Where did that go? Where's the ball? Oh, I've missed the green for sure. Imagine if it was a hole in one, eh? <laughs> oh, no, I can see it. We've missed the green. Oh, no, I missed the green. Oh. Devo, first shot I was hoping to at least hit the green. Hey, it was pure strike at least. That was pure as. Straight at the pin the whole way. So let's go with 60. Let's see if we can hit the green, eh? Watch out, schnitty. Watch out, buddy. Come on, be good. Oh, wow. Let's have a look where that second shot pitched to because I got a feeling it was close to the pin. Where's the pitch mark? I'll show you guys how to repair a pitch mark too. Properly, proper way to do it so the grass repairs properly. Where did it land, brother? The green's pretty firm, so there's a chance we won't get too many bad pitch marks. Well, it's ridiculously firm. Where's the pitch? Seriously. There it is. Aha! So that was going at the pin. And it's got a huge hop. There it is there. Eh? Huge hop. And rolled straight past. I'll probably show it up from that camera over there. But this is how you repair yourself a pitch mark. Okay, you see this? Push in, in, in. Push the turf back in so it repairs itself properly and it doesn't leave a brown mark. Don't go under it and pull it back because that just pushes the roots up and then causes damage in the long run. Whereas that gives us a chance to repair as well as it can. Well, thanks guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. So psyched that I get to have my first shot into here. I'm starting start hitting shots in here more often for the fun of it. Maybe every now and then at the end of a video. Excited to have tournament days here. Members days in the future maybe, we'll see how things go, but mate, really, really excited that got to happen today. Really cool, what's it Chip?
just for the fun of it anyway. Not bad, not bad at all. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Appreciate you, appreciate the support from all of you over this whole journey. Really cool tip my first shot in, and that was legit my first shot. I had controlled myself, even while the cameras weren't rolling, to not hit a shot in, because I wanted to capture it on camera. Thanks guys so much. Hope you guys have a good week, and I'll see you guys very soon. Oh, for the next video. <laughs> it's gonna be good for my short game, my practice meet, and I'll tell you what, it's gonna be so good having this little golf course here.